following on from a video I did a while ago on prayer, my heart was guided to share with you the positive side of prayer, an essential element that's often overlooked living in a world such as ours where there is so much activity and the demands on our time that we overlook a very important key element of why we pray. And I believe that prayer has many miracles attached to it because in today's trying times it is easy, isn't it, to become overwhelmed with stress and the problems of life. And during these times, many people call out to God, to Jesus, to Buddha, to Muhammad, even to Moses, and not forgetting the Virgin Mary, Kuan Yin, Magdalena, even the guardian angels are summoned for help. And any force that can connect them with the power of the divine through their prayer will help them. Sometimes we get help. Sometimes we don't. Often we are left wondering if there is any way to make a clearer connection to the Creator. In a time of need, such as now, when our world is being bombarded by so much negativism, the recession, which has gripped many people's hearts, we know that we have to come back into our heart and use the gift of prayer. And I believe that when we combine two of our most powerful prayers into one package, something really happens. The miracle and the prayer are one. And one such prayer that many of us are familiar with is the Lord's Prayer, a prayer that's thousands of years old. And it's a beautiful prayer. And this prayer is a direct conversation of the heart with God. Prayer, I believe, may be used to protect the user and his or her loved ones from evil, to sustain them in times of need, maybe to heal them in times of illness or to comfort them in grief. By the combined power of faith, a belief in the unknown, and applied concentration, the lay monastics of our community, the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans, we have given our lives to God as a kernel of hope for the interfaith movement, for all beliefs to come together as one. That's our ministry. That's what Francis asked us to do. And many of us have surrendered our heart, walking in faith, no guarantee, but we walk in faith from our monastery without walls. And we trust, we trust in a God of love, and this God of love hears every prayer. And though we may never see an answer to our prayer, by nature of the life we live in our own contemplative life, we know that whatever we ask of God from a heart of love, that request is heard. And if we're praying for a healing, a deliverance or a special request for someone taking exams or passing the driving test with honours. We may never hear from the person who asked us, but that is life. 
Often they only come to us when they have a need, maybe a want. But you and I know that God doesn't do want. He does need. So our prayers are prayers of the heart. Because as monastics, lay monastics live in the modern in the modern world, we give God our availability and our vulnerability as a prayer. And unlike conventional monastics who get up at a set time and go to bed at a set time and every minute of every day is programmed, we adjust the demands on our life, whether we're out working or whether we're here, such as me, where my full-time occupation is as a contemplative monastic here. So everything I do, from washing up to drying up, ironing, feeding the hens, cleaning the hens out, that's a prayer because it's given from the heart. And I've trained for that. I've trained just like a nurse or a doctor who goes through years of study, of self-discipline, and trying to understand the mindset of God by emptying my mind and my life of any distractions so that I can come to God as a pure vessel aware of my humanity but I come as one who is a professional prayer consultant that is my life and that resonates because when I was a, a senior nurse manager in palliative care in the world I understood the demands placed upon me and the need for upgrading and updating my own qualification so as a prayer partner in service to God, the God of one face, the God of love, prayer is a way of life. It's not something we open in, open in a book to recite another person's word or language. It's a prayer of the heart. And I truly do believe that that is the way forward today and that is to bring people into the positive dynamics of prayer. And prayer is miraculous. It opens closed doors, but we're asked to trust. And it's always answered at a time when we least expect. But another important advantage that we have as prayer partners in service to God is the seven vows we take, but one of them, the greatest of the vows, is providence. We, we don't apply for funding. We trust in Almighty God to meet our needs, not our wants. But that's not to say we're complacent because we use every gift that God has given us to give glory to God. But the power and efficacy and the miracles associated with providence is not for everybody because it does ask of us a complete detachment from materialism from the world, being in it but not of it. And that is a great prayer. It's a prayer of giving of yourself and your heart. And we know that God's love assures us to continue to pray for you and to hold the world, to hold the whole interfaith community where all faiths come together as one, to pray for peace, to pray for harmony. And to activate this power of prayer in order to help you, all you have to do is to go into your space and trust. You're asked to go into your heart, to reconnect with the divine within you and to trust. That's all that's asked and use your gift of free will and ask God to come into your life and help you. There is no agenda and a lot of our work is underpinned by the Essenes. Please go to our website at sean-bradley.com and click on how we came to know and love God through the Essenes. Bless you.